welcome back. MTG Joe here, and uh, we're going to be trying out a different take on Luris. Um, Luris has seen a few builds. You have your Black White, your Black Red, your Cycling, your Jeskai. Um, pretty much, if you're playing cheap stuff, it gets it back. Um, so this is one that is Jund, so red, black, and green. Um, basically, what we're trying to do in this deck is still play like Cat Oven. You have stuff like Mire Triton. Uh, Glow Spore Shaman and Binding of the Titans to put creatures into our graveyard that can make very large Fiend Artisans and also fuel Croxa to turbo out Croxa. Um, it also finds Croxa. And then you have Footfall Crater, which you can uh, discard early and then get it back with Luris. So you can give this Trample as well as Croxa. And then you have a couple Rick's Mahdi and uh, Dread Horde Butchers to kind of round it up. So notably, we're not playing Scorpion, we're not playing Whisper Squad, we're not playing uh, Priest. Um, so it's a slightly different take. Got three Fabled Passages, uh, a couple basics of each, some castles, and then uh, just Shock Land. So basically every land in our deck theoretically comes into play untapped at some point or another. Uh, Sideboard-wise, we have some Dead Weights. We have some Soul Guide Lanterns versus like um, Mirror decks, cycling decks, stuff like that. Agonizing Remorse, some Heartless Axe when we need de dedicated removal. I don't know if this is better or the minus 3 3. Figure this is more flexible because it can deal with bigger things. Uh, and then Cinder Vines, which is actually pretty good right now against a lot of these greedy piles of like Yorion. They play a lot of non creatures, particularly enchantments. So we can blow up the enchantments, but also incidentally deal points of damage here and there. So if you combine that with something like uh, cauldron familiar you can slowly drain them out so we'll give it a shot i was a win away uh from plat tier one and then fell down all the way to plat tier two so just slowly moving our way back up we will play some ranked uh, i want to see how this works versus the straight red black um, if anyone has a ember cleave list that they are happy with ship it my way please i want to cleave some people um, Gruul's been inconsistent with the mana, so can't go crazy with it, but I want to cleave someone. I'm also missing some wild cards and just don't want to put money in right now, but uh, otherwise I'd be playing Winota. Uh, so let's play first. This hand's a bit slow. Playing against another Luris deck. Let's try it. Probably go bindings first. Well, it depends. If they go cycling, then I'll go fiend artisan first. You usually want these slightly later. Like turn two isn't the best time for them. Hopefully, it's just like black white. I also don't like that this puts cards in their graveyard too. But my we can exile some cards. So let's go like this. Being on the play helps here. Even if we draw something like Glow Spore Shaman, it'd be good, or Mire Trident. Okay, so it's black white. So these ones will usually play. Um, what's its name? The. The big cat. The. Uh, Johnny's Pride Mate. So milling both ovens wasn't great. Abzan. Okay, so we can get rid of the Stone Coil Serpent here. So I was hoping for a little bit more of an impactful hit this turn. If we don't draw anything better, I'll go Fiend Artisan and then play a Tap Land. May actually, okay, they go serpent for two. Mire Trident's actually really good here. Hey Stampede, how's it going? I think we just go this. The death touch is relevant here. Next turn, I can play out a, ta a binding and a fiend artisan. Actually, I can get back Glow Spore. So we can play Glow Spore and Binding, and then play Fiend Artisan. We got some options. Hey, Sharkbait, how's it going? Okay, so let's 
So they have all siege. Um, I think we, I want the Mire trade in. The Death Touch is relevant. So, yeah, wanted to try out some uh, some Jund. Okay, so we got that. We just need a red source. I think we play out one of these now. It's a big body, so it can be a pretty good blocker. They have a land. They can play Luris and then kill my Mire trade in. So it's something to keep in mind. They can do that every turn. So might want to get the bindings going. Mind you, I can just keep putting Luris in. <laughs> okay, well, that's a lot of effort they're putting in. Let's see if they attack, I will trade here. Okay, well, you did your job. Um, I think just mana. Yeah, uh, I kind of gave in and played. Um, so do I want to exile those is the question. I can play Luris. Because if they hit a land, then they kill my Luris. So I think we want to prioritize getting rid of some of these removal spells in their graveyard. Just hitting all our hitting all our lands. So we have two Kroxas. If we just hit another red source. I thought the Abosh Mono Black deck we played the other day on stream was the one for me, but. Okay, so this is the enchantment build. With Athenia. Okay, cat's pretty good here, so let's get rid of one, two, so I can sack you, what do we got in our deck, Dreadhorde's not, eh, Dreadhorde's not the best, I think what we do is Cast Luris, and then just cast Fiend Artisan. Oh, we can do Witch's Oven. That's actually sweet. And that can uh, insulate our life total a bit. They can block with multiple things. But then that clears out most of their board, so I'm probably okay with it. And the thing is, if they kill my Luris this turn, I get it back. I take the damage. We'll see what they decide to kill here. I get Luris back anyways. I'm gonna keep this in the graveyard for now. It's one point of power on the Fiend Artisan. And we get Croxa back too. So I could just Croxa this turn. But I think... Yeah, they had a free block with the Serpent. Good call, Stampede.
So with Footfall Crater, we'll pop it on here. It's probably not the best. I should have put it here because it's our only green source. Give it trample so they take some damage. Next turn, I get Croxa back. One, two, three, four. And then I can give it haste as well. So that sets us up better for next turn. That's fine. With the trample now, it does get over it. Keep making zombies, but we'll have we'll force them out of two discards at least. It's actually not bad for a following turn. Um, what do we have? Yeah, we have enough to do. So let's cast Croxa. One, two, three, four, five. Want to prioritize non creatures here. Haste. They do get a free block here, but it forces them to block. And then I can also cycle this. So they can sack this to give it, yeah, they're basically dead. Cool. That was actually a very good showing. It's exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, this matchup, the dead weights are good. The lanterns are good. Probably the heartless axe. Coming out, I like the trample elements. Rick's Mahdi could come out, it's not that good. Meyer Triton also probably comes out. This mills them, so maybe we take this out. The only thing I do like is it brings back our Luris. Uh, maybe just cut. Maybe on the play, cut the Dread Horde. Or maybe keep the Dread Horde, go down a Croxa. Run it like that. Stone Coil can get pretty difficult to deal with first our deck. And maybe we want Stone Coils of our own. No red. Opponent goes first. What's my turn look like? Meyer Trident and the Fiend Artisan. At least I have two plays. Cool. 
Oh. Gives me a play on one. So this is where it gets a little worrisome when we don't have an answer for the pride mate. Ah, I should have played the tap land. So I didn't have to shock. It's fine. Most likely next turn we're just playing out a Mire Trident. Stone Coil for three. Oh, I was worried about that. We only have two mountains in the deck. So I was a little worried we'd mill both. Hit dead weight. Another dead weight. So they're just killing all our stuff here. Elvin's great here. So I think this turn we just go... Dread Horde. Because the thing is they can play Lurus and just minus it. But I want it that if they do that, we can sack this in response and then deal two damage to Lurus. This being pro, we could have played Cinder Vines, but it has protection against it. Sure. Likely they block here. Okay. Let's go two to the face. Do I want another land? Gets me closer to the Croxa, so probably. Got a lot of cats in the graveyard, so let's put this on top. Ooh, why did you tap like that? I can't play out Fiend Artisan this turn. Actually, let's go full control. I can get back two cats from my graveyard here. Isn't too bad, even if they lure us here, they get back the dead weight. Ah, they tapped stupidly. Our auto tapper and their auto tapper not doing them favors. So that means they probably have the plus uh, 2 2 effect in hand. back these cats my card got a bunch in the graveyard shock in bringing croxa can luris
Can Luris and dead weight. That's actually probably a better play. The only downside is if they do that pump spell, then it gives it hexproof. Yeah. Uh, just play this tapped. It's basically a free attack. It's gonna die so they can decide if they want it to gain three life here. If we draw one more land, I can play both out next turn. Extinction event. Yikes. Certainly a card. We just try to race them with uh, Croxa. One, two, three, four. We do have to take one creature. Uh, hey, uh, Manic Mike. Uh, we are playing. It's a post sideboard game. Give me one sec. Let me just attack. Um, so in the main board, it's the Fiend Artisans, Glow Spore, Shaman, and then we also have the Binding of the Titans. And then we have Cinder Vines in the sideboard. This is pretty much mono block. So they just take three points. They get a free block here. Next turn, what I can do too is I can uh, use Fiend Artisan to sack this Mire Trident and then just get another Croxa uh, to dome him for three damage. Well, they can sack my graveyard, making this very tiny, making me very sad. Actually, I forgot that. That's how it works. They get the, um, when the trigger's still on the stack. So here all I need to do is sack this, go get a second Croxa, they have no more cards. Uh, we want to keep this one, and they're dead. Alright, this deck worked exactly how I wanted it that first game. Give Arena a quick reset and we'll fire it up for another one. Feeling a bit of leg on the client.
So I did mention when we kicked off this video, if anyone has a good ember cleave list they want to share and help me cleave some fools, do drop a link somewhere. I do have some, should have a couple more community codes. Um, if there's any left over, I'll post them um, in the comments in the, this video once it's up on YouTube. Um, so for those stopping by, give you a quick run through the deck. Basically what we're trying to do is combination of Cat Oven with Croxa, a bunch of self mill effects to find uh, Croxa early. Uh, and then you can get back Footfall Crater to give either Croxa haste or Fiend Artisan haste. And then they also get Trample. And then Sideboard is basically a bunch of kind of removal spells. Uh, and then Cinder Vines, which I think is very good in the format right now, especially against like Yorion decks. Let's play another one. Hey Max, how's it going? Keep. We are playing another Lurus. The interesting thing is until you see the first line, I'm doing well. Allergies are a little rough. Okay, well. Let's race. Getting rid of Fox on one is actually pretty solid for us. Okay, they have second Fox. We can draw, um, uh, no worries, thanks for stopping by nonetheless. We can draw an oven, it'll be good. See if they attack in here. We do need to be somewhat aggressive in this matchup. So I can exile cards from their graveyard with binding. It does make a potential Zenith Flare worse. We needed a land. What'd we hit? We hit some lands for them. Oven was on top. This is gonna be difficult to deal with. prioritize exiling their creatures. So I'm going to block like this so I can take the Valiant Rescuer off the battlefield as well. Perfect. Um, so let's get rid of Fox and Dranith Stinger. It's less they can get back with Lurus. They can get Trample. is relevant so if that's the case hmm, I think we need to try to find Croxa let's put a land on top I don't need to cycle this turn so let's just play out of familiar Basically, Zenith Flare ranged. Yeah, they can get Laris back to get this in a turn. Gain one's rough against this deck. So we'll probably want the Agonizing Remorses, the... Um, here... 
get Mire Trade in. It blocks well. Get a second red source. So we can do, I guess we can start just trying to chip this in every turn, but they're probably just gonna set us up for the Zenith Flare. Yep, 13 us. One, two, three, four. They most likely have another flare. They're not really at the stage where they're attacking us, so. Try to get some chip damage in. Yep. Post board, we're better served. Cinder vines doesn't really do anything, so let's bring in these dead weights, these remorse. Okay, coming out, these Rick's Mahdi. Shave a Croxa. Fiend Artisan can get big enough. Get rid of these bindings. Um, get rid of a couple footfall craters. Maybe all the footfalls. Let's try it like that. Really just need to be able to hit the um, Zenith Flare. Keep this. Probably one more land than we want, but we have Mire Trade in. They have Fox on one. No Fox on one. Okay. Already doing okay. Let's do Meyer Trade in. Wanted some creatures. Okay, so Apostle is very annoying. Particularly because it can eat our graveyard. Maybe we want some red removal. Eat Kroxa is probably the turn. Let's go Fiend Arches in this turn, because next turn I can play out both. If I can get this big enough. And if they're just going to hold up uh, mana. Okay, they go Valiant Rescuer, so they can't eat my graveyard this turn. But they can chump. They have no red. me not a single creature um forces a cycle card out of their hand oh we got rid of another apostle not for nothing, they might be priced into getting rid of the Crocs out here. Problem is they're just gonna keep making one ones. Get 
What's that? Slightly bigger. Probably just another Fiend Artisan this turn. And then next turn I can Mire Trade in, try to find some more stuff. Need to find Soul Guide Lantern. You are not the Lantern we are looking for. They can just keep eating my creatures. I do have a dead weight in here and then just lions. So we'll hold off. I can start throwing some, or I can um, use these to sack to find stuff and then get stuff back. Might be able to fill our graveyard faster than they can exile it. Plus, as they're doing this, it gives us more. Okay, they do that. They do have one more activation. See if they hit the oven. Okay, so they do have remorse. Or we hit the remorse. Let's see what's hanging out in the opponent's hand. Sheesh. Double flare. So let's kill this. Then I guess we try to cast it, see if they exile it instead. Oh, actually we did that, that was dumb. Don't particularly... Just pay one. They have the Zenith Flare, but what I can do is I can sack whatever they're targeting if it's like one of my creatures. And this just kind of drill gets me out. So if you target a creature, we sack this instead. They do have seven man. Okay, so he's got Laris here. Second Apostle is also kind of annoying. So I'm not sacking my cat because with the trigger on the stack they can eat something. Mm. Go Dread Horde. Oh, I know what to do. Okay, so Treadhorde attack. They can take the free block. I kill the Valiant Rescuer. I'm gonna get a Croxa. Perfect. That means they're not getting Crocs of this turn. Um, let's get rid of Mire Triton. Not really doing a whole lot right now. I get rid of the second Zenith Flare. This 
So they can cast the fox, they can cast the other thing. I just need a way to exile their graveyard. I also have no way of... We're on like the mill them out plan. Why do I only have one Croxa? Did I side? Why am I to? Did I sideboard them out? Okay, so they are getting their attack on. Let's go. Glow spore from for one from here. And then just Meyer trade in. Yeah, if that's the case, I don't think there's a way I can win this game without them milling out. Because they just keep exiling my graveyard. They have like near infinite blockers. What's their time at? 23. 38 cards are at 31, so we're actually more at risk of milling out. Okay, I need to reassess this matchup. The fact that that card alone just houses the deck. Everything in my deck is uh, is black. Jeez. Yeah, I think we're dead here. I, I can't win from this uh, point. So let's tweak up the sideboard. Agonizing remorse is fine. Maybe two cinder vines down a remorse. like that so like what do I have against the control matchup but the control matchups probably not too bad go like that I don't want to be completely based on Luris because it's easy for them to take it out and then these dead weights are pretty bad dragonfire hits a wider range of things all right give her now a reset and we'll fire off for one more so they're like, we weren't dead just then, but they were hitting us for two a turn. We couldn't get in any attacks. I had no removal in my deck that can get rid of those things. And like our whole game plan. Like there's a way with Croxa that I could have, and it was a mistake for me to sideboard them up. Because we're not like hyper aggressive, these cycling decks usually can beat us. we not play a Laris deck? I want to play a Yorian deck. Nope. Let's play Laris again. Okay, so this version of the deck, if you're seeing that, 
it's not um, cycling. They usually don't play. So we'll see if it's black, red, or yep. So they have priest. Okay, so that's something good to have in the graveyard to get back after. It's something I can use to shoot priest. Cats, do they have the oven? They don't have the oven. Okay. It's a pretty free attack here, I think. So I th think what we do is shock and cycle. Or do we go binding? Maybe we go binding. They can't play Laris this turn, we can exile. Fills our graveyard. I say that and then we don't fill our graveyard. Next turn, get another red source. I can play out two things. They get to exile their Croxo, which is nice. Oh, they get to do the priest trigger. So. Hey, uh, arena's not too bad today. It's So what they're doing is trigger on the stack. Uh, they're gonna sack it with priest. We gain life? Yeah, we gain life. So the thing is, without the oven, I can exile a cat from them. See what their follow-up play here is. They have a cat. They have another Croxa. And they have Fiend Artisan. Okay. So we could shrink this down. Yeah, there's a couple cool interactions with Priest. So if they have another land, they can get this oven, which makes life a little hectic, but maybe we should have taken the oven because they already had cat. What do we have in the graveyard? Don't have an oven of our own, so. Let's go get this. Gonna do this first, discard the land. Okay, we hit Croxa. So I think we go Fiend Artisan this turn. Because then next turn I can Croxa and play out um, Dreadhorde Butcher. So they're going to do the same, Croxa on the stack. This being Incidental Exile is actually pretty decent in this matchup. can escape back Croxa, but it's not going to do a huge amount based on the opponent's board state right now. Ah, uh, they got Timer it. It's going to eat our stuff. Bye bye Croxa. So we're 
kind of a dog match one. Like, I don't understand how these decks are playing main board exile. So I can get a land back. So I can get... If I get a land back... That means I go Luris and cast the Mire Trade in. Footfall Crater, give my thing Haste Tramples, not that relevant. Actually, Binding's not bad here, I can start exiling their graveyard. We're gonna have to sack this anyways, so let's pack in here. Pitch this to Croxa. Them exiling stuff from their graveyard actually bodes pretty well. Because it makes their Fiend Artisan potentially smaller. Hit a lot of lands. I need a way to get rid of this stupid priest. I think we probably want priests of our own in there. They're prioritizing exiling our graveyard. get another binding back and then just start exiling their graveyards that works out as well I right, we got the oven so let's get rid of cat let's get rid of croxa what they can do here is sack something to get the cat back. Which in all honesty is not the worst for us. I want to wait till I have enough mana to escape Croxa the same turn that I uh, search for it. So let's go, let's do you first, give us the most information. Rick's Mahdi, which doesn't do a whole lot. Let's go another binding. We hit Oven and we hit Croxa. So it's a free block for them here. What did they mill over? They got Claim, they got Fiend Artisan. It's fine. It forces them with the Familiar. They lose a, a food token which can be meaningful later on. 
So I'm assuming they're going to get rid of the Croxa this turn. We'll see if they decide to get rid of this uh, Witch's Oven. We are slowly just losing life. We can eat some more stuff in their graveyard. We have a Dread Horde and a Fiend Artisan. We can get back something. This might just be another oven. I can block like this and then I get it back with because um, they've already tapped out all their mana for the turn because I get it back with binding and then that gains me some life that's the nice thing with the bindings it lets you recycle you can activate priests Exile, Exile, and let's get our Luris back. Just get Croxa back and play out Glow Spore. Yeah, because then I can give it Trample next turn. with Footfall Crater. Even I could just get the Footfall back, or I can't get Footfall back to hand. Okay, so Rick's Mahdi. Go Glow Spore here. 30 cards to 35. Uh, we're going to decline the land. Get the block anyways. So we'll attack like this. Three point, two points here. start giving uh, Fiend Artisan Trample. Same with Croxa. So they could bring back the cat and then discard their hand to Rick's Mahdi. I think our plan is just try to make Fiend Artisan as big as possible. They might have claim of the Firstborn. Something to be mindful of. Especially like with Croxa is going to be a pain. Maybe we do want claims in the deck. Can deal with a lot of these issues without removal. I think we make that change after this. 
I've liked a lot of the other elements of the deck. Cut the Rick's Mahdi. So we get to return something to our hand. Let's get this Dread Horde. So let's go Luris. What do they have in the graveyard? Just so I can see what we're popping this onto. Attack, we attack. Nah, they probably hold this back. They discard here. Another priest isn't the worst. So even if they block one of these, the creature's gonna die, so this would still take damage based on devotion. This gains us five light or get, does five damage to them. Like six, but then they gain the life back, so it doesn't really matter. The opponent is taking their time. That's a strange decision. Now I guess they get to exile something from my graveyard. They can exile two creatures. But that still kills that. Strange move all around. So two cats in the bin. They can't exile anymore. They get one activation for the turn. I guess they could recast Timeret. Get Luris. And then they can recast that. Could punch through some damage, but it's gonna be a little iffy. This uh, cat draining us for a point each turn is starting to hurt us. Really could use an oven. I think even if we lose this match, just the amount of time the opponent's been taking could come back to bite them. Like, we're going to be better in this matchup post-board.
This way they need to block Alaris if they want to do the sack. And then we don't have one of our creatures get sacked. They've used six more minutes o'clock. That's a good draw. I think we sack Croxa here. Because we can always escape it back. This also pushes through more damage. Got a pretty chunky graveyard. Oh, great, more lions. Oh, you know what? I could have hasted Croxa. It's probably a mistake. But they would have blocked one anyways. But we could have given trample to whatever they block. Yeah, I think that was how we would have won. So they bring something back. They sack. Myers Grasp doesn't work. Might still be okay. 15, 21. For an aggro deck, this is sure taking its time. So realistically, if I sack Croxa, uh, well, they have to play some, unless they draw a creature from hand. If they draw a creature from hand, then they, then I have to keep Croxa around because they sack the creature plus whatever they get from the graveyard. Okay, they draw a card. Yeah, I think we had claims to the deck. Are you kidding me? That does it. They sack with Croxus trigger on the stack. That deals exactly five damage. <sighs> That's super annoying. They had exactly Croxa for the win. Okay, so dead weights, dragon fires, lanterns coming out. 
Footfall Crater is actually really good in this matchup. Rick's Mahdi could come out. Probably these Shamans don't do too much. Two cards, two cards to cut. I think we still want Croxa. On the play, Dreadhorde's pretty good. Maybe cut down a, land, a Footfall Crater. Maybe two. Maybe cut a Croxa. Croxa's a little bit of a liability. That's so annoying. I think we did punt it because we could have attacked with hasty Croxa that turn. Forgot the haste element. No red source, a little annoying. Hey Truex, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Just lost uh, a very annoying one. Okay, Crocs on the yard. Yeah, it's a Jund variant. You get footfalls from the graveyard with Luris to give Croxa and Fiendart is in haste. We getting claimed. Okay, priests. Yeah. One time. Um, I think I want to hold off on this. I want to try to find a red source. Then hold this for when we can... Probably trade. Do I trade? Nah, I probably hold it back. Ah, they got the Dread Horde. Punished here. Need a red source. So I'm going to hold this back, take the trade. I need this off the battlefield. What's our land sitch look like? We have two mountains, seven, nine, Effectively 12 lands that could get red for us. Second oven. Dead weight is pretty solid. I don't want to deal with priests in this game. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to attack in. The good thing, this can get me a red source next turn. And then I'm going to dead weight here. They kill that. I want to hold this up in case they have claim of the firstborn. Play you out. They 
fight on Luris first. Okay, they cast Luris. They can go Fiend Art is in here. Again, they tapped weird. They could have played this out, which probably is a little bit better. Blood Crypt. So here we're going to go Luris and I'm going to dead weight on the their Luris. They'll sack it for food. That's fine. But we're really just trying to pick off their board here. We have our value engine going. They're also at 10 minutes on the clock. I can also go get Footfall Crater. I could sack this Serrated Scorpion to go get something. Actually, I can do this, sack it to get a cat just to start draining their life. All right, somewhat of a desperate move there. So we stumbled on lands, but we are still able to stabilize. Okay, so we can mire trade in, sack the mire trade in. What did we draw for the turn? Oh, we drew a land. It's not at all hard to visualize. Could also get Croxa back. But I think what we do... I want to drain them out. here just past turn kind of inclined to get this binding going just so I can eat their stuff it's probably the play to be honest I can make this smaller or we just go croxa Yeah, we probably go binding. Okay, well, they got a claim. So that changes up our plan a bit. They could go get a cat of their own. Yeah, that looks like what they're gonna do.
So we might be able to catch them with their cat with the Scorching Dragon Fire. Doesn't give me my second red. So I think what we do is this. Attack with both. They're gonna block here. This puts a counter on. Well, I guess that gives them a free. Point of damage to the face. So they have the sacks anyways. Fiend Artisan's really good in this deck. Sack it. Bring it back. Bring it back. Yep. Sorry about that. Arena decides to crash at the best opportunities. So we're going to exile here. Gain them some more life. We can escape Croxa back next turn. So discards are Croxa. They're red mana short. 650 on the clock. Ooh, they get Luris back. That is a problem. Need like a dead weight here. So we're just gonna take this off the battlefield. We get the point in on us anyways, but we have a free block this go around. trying to make them react to every trigger. They certainly are taking their time. So no calls in our deck makes it a little worse. We do have binding as our kind of call. That's actually a pretty solid draw. So we'll go Croxa here. One, two, three, four, five. They take another three points of damage. The 
then we just play out. So they can escape their Croxa this turn. Gets rid of most of their graveyard. Sorry, just figuring out dinner for tonight. So depending how we play this out, we can attack with Croxa and then escape another Croxa to deal the remaining damage. They can gain three life. Might be dead weight. Oh, it's got menace and death touch. You block, you block, and then I could sack the Croxa, or I can sack Familiar. I think taking Laris off the battlefield gets rid of a lot of the recursive stuff. Yeah, uh, Amorfrim, I forgot the um, calls does that. They're also at 3.30 on the clock, so we're just going to try to waste their time. They've been playing very slow this game. They've used nine more minutes a clock. One. I guess that's kind of loose because I lose the cat. Take out the last card from their hand. If they attack with Crocs, I can double block. Okay, it's an oven. I held up the oven in case they have claim. I don't want to die to claim of the firstborn. And then this, holding this land in hand might entice them. Okay, they could get six points of damage in. And they can gain some life. That is relevant. See here if they attack in. 
They do lose their Kroxa if they do that. Okay, they can gain three life. I just want like a dummy creature. They could sack that for cat. Yeah. Writing's on the wall. They basically run out of time on the clock there. They're going to the next match. Oh no, is this the error where we lose the game? No. No. Don't do this. Don't do this, Arena. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? That is... <sighs> oh. Okay. That's it. No, I don't want a commander. Okay, whatever. Just play the game. I don't know. It doesn't uh, come down the clock. They had like 40 seconds on the clock left too. That's actually so annoying. We had that game one. Okay, waiting on opponent. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. They need to seriously fix that, because if this happens during like an actual... Can you imagine if this is like MCQ qualifier? You get two losses and this is how you take a loss? They have a minute three on the clock. This is super, 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 super frustrating. Well, our deck's pretty sweet. I am enjoying the deck quite a bit. I think we just add some claims in, uh, get rid of the Rixmati, and then we pretty much have the shell there. I think we also need to just fix our mana a little. We have too much green. I'm gonna get rid of a basic forest and go up as another mountain. So I have 13 seconds on the clock. Let's see what happens. I don't know if we timed out, they timed out. They got stuck with the commander bug. I don't care, we got the win. We got the win. It better have given me the rank. <sighs> uh, 
Okay. I know, claim of the three claims, get rid of Rick's Mahdi and a Glow Spore Shaman. That's the deck. That's the deck. This deck's sick. All right. Uh, no, our mouth. Since we cut that, we still have the green. That's enough sources, I think, of green. Nine, you really only need it one pip of each. And this is kind of fringe. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up before Arena gives me any more heart attacks. We've gone for almost two hours with this deck. A lot longer than I normally do, but it was sweet. Uh, thanks for stopping by, everyone. Appreciate the support. Uh, stay safe out there, and I will catch you next time. Have a great one.